I'm going to introduce you to titration calculations. Uh, these are standard calculations um, that you do when you're titrating an acid with a base or a base with an acid. Let's look at our first problem. We've got 50 milliliters of a sample of sodium hydroxide that is titrated to the end point. Remember, that's where the indicator is going to change color with 10 milliliters of a 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid solution. And we want to know the molarity of the sodium hydroxide solution. A typical way to work these problems is with the equation given here. This is molarity of the acid times volume of the acid is equivalent to molarity of the base times volume of the base. If you think about molarity times volume, is always equal to moles. So this side would be moles of acid is equivalent to moles of base. And when the moles of acid and the moles of base are equal to each other, you have reached the end point of the titration. So by setting the two equations equal to each other, solving for the missing variable, you will have found the molarity of that base. So what you're going to do, again, is take the 10 milliliters of the acid times its molarity and set it equal to the volume of the base and solve for the molarity of the base. Let's look at this problem worked out. As long as your acid is monoprotic, and as long as your base delivers only one hydroxide ion, then this equation is simple and easy to use. Again, we took the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid, equivalent to the molarity of the base, times the volume of the base. Solving for the molarity of the base, we get 0 0.02 molar. If you don't have monoprotic acid or a base that contributes one hydroxide, then you might want to work it a little differently. Let's look at this example. We have 50 milliliters of calcium hydroxide that's titrated with 10 milliliters of 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. Well, the HCl delivers one proton, but the calcium hydroxide delivers two moles of hydroxide ion. We want to solve for the molarity of the calcium hydroxide. Here's your balanced equation. And you can see from the balanced equation that two moles of HCl are needed for every one mole of calcium hydroxide. That's because the one mole of calcium hydroxide supplies two moles of hydroxide ion, so it requires two moles of hydrogen ion to neutralize it. The safest way to work a problem like this is with analysis. If you take your volume of acid, 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, the hydrochloric acid was 0 0.1 molar, which means that 1,000 milliliters of it contains 0 0.1 mole. And then using your balanced equation, 2 moles of HCl is required for every 1 mole of calcium hydroxide. Solving for that, gives you 0 0.005 moles of calcium hydroxide. Taking those moles of calcium hydroxide and dividing it by the volume that they are contained in will give you the molarity of the calcium hydroxide. This way you're using the mole ratio and noting that the mole ratio is a 2 to 1 relationship. If you use the molarity times volume equation, you can use this. You just have to make sure that you take into account the less than 1 to 1 mole ratio. Again, you've got your molarity and volume of acid. And as we said, it's going to take twice as many moles of base to neutralize it. So you need to make sure you take that into account. And you will get the same exact answer as you get in the problem above. It's just frequently um, that students will put this 2 in the wrong place because it's not as easy for them to think about. So again, use either method that you would prefer. Let's look at another problem. In this problem, we have an acid that produces 
two hydrogen ions. So your balanced equation shows that it is not a one-to-one -one ratio. So using your MAVA, MBVB is not as uh, easy to do, but it certainly is possible. Let's look at this problem both ways. You've got 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide that's titrated with 10 milliliters of 0.1 molar sulfuric acid and we now want to know the molarity of the sodium hydroxide. Again, two moles of hydrogen ions are needed, um, or excuse me, two moles of hydrogen ions are contributed by the sulfuric acid, so two moles of hydroxide ion will be needed to neutralize those. So if we use our dimensional analysis method and take our volume of sulfuric acid, and again it was 0 0.1 molar, so there's our conversion, 1,000 milliliters contains 0.1 moles, and then from the balanced equation, one mole of sulfuric acid reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide. You then find the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that have reacted to reach the end point, divide it by the volume of NaOH that you used, and you get the molarity. If you use this equation, certainly possible to do that. You just need to pay attention that you must put this 2 in here to account for the two hydrogen ions that are coming from the sulfuric acid. And again, if you put the 2 on the wrong side, that's when you're going to end up making that most common mistake. So use this method if you feel comfortable and are sure you can put that coefficient in the correct place or use your good dimensional analysis which will never fail you in this method.